All right, let me explain this real simple now. In Revelation 20, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It does not say Jesus reigned for a thousand years. It says they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So why is almost everybody teaching this thousand year reign of Christ? It never mentions it. Not once. Not a single time. It's they, meaning us, live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Now check this out here in Matthew 24. When those disciples came to Jesus, they said, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And so he tells them, and then he says, The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, which is Jesus, in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. All right, this gathering together of his elect. Okay, that's the end of the world. Should be no dispute, no doubt about it. When the sun is darkened and Jesus comes in the clouds and... The elect are gathered together. Now, in 1 uh, Corinthians 15, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall not sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Did you, did you catch that parallel here in Matthew 24, verse 31? A great sound of a trumpet. You see the connection? Right In a moment, in twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This is the end of the world, right? And the end of the world should be no dispute. All right, First Thessalonians 4, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead shall, in Christ shall rise first. And then those of us that remain will be lifted up with them to be with the Lord, to meet the Lord in the air. And so this is paralleled in Revelation 20. Now, if you are going to say the thousand years happens after this, then you're saying it's not the end of the world. You're saying that the dead are not raised. You're making a mess and a mockery of the Bible. All right, the parallel in Revelation 20 is verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. All right, so this uh, parallels exactly with... Um, uh, the gathering together of the elect. All right. The dead shall be raised incorruptible. Right. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. So this is the resurrection like we read in Daniel. Um, some raised to ever shall not all sleep. How's that, how's that verse go? And many of them that sleep in the dust... Of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is again talking about the end of the world. All right, and so this is what happens when Jesus comes and there's a great sound, the sound of a trumpet, and uh, we shall all be raised. Those of us that are saved are raised up to be with the Lord in the air and then. All those who are not saved are down at our feet. Like it says in Genesis 3, Till I make my enemies thy footstool. 
All right, you got to connect the dots on these. And, and look, people are taking advantage of you. Oops. Did I misspell that? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I apologize. So in Genesis 3, it talks about uh, he shall bruise. You shall bruise his heel, right? Where's that word at? All right, and this parallels what we read also in a number of places throughout the Bible. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right, and then to go back what I was saying first, uh, the footstool, till I make my enemies thy footstool, right? We see that in Psalm 110. We see it in a number of places. Henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. This is prophesied in Genesis 3. So this is when we are lifted up with Jesus and our enemies are at our feet and God sends fire down from heaven and destroys them all and puts an end to death and hell forever. And just like Jesus says, behold, I make all things new so where are you getting this idea of jesus christ reigning a thousand years after he returns after the end of the world it makes no doggone sense at all 